Hey all you cats and kittens out there, this is Dave with the Bass Channel and another episode of Shorties. Thank you for tuning in. This is a momentous occasion. This is an historic day for the Bass Channel and for Shorties in particular because today we're looking at the worst short scale bass we might ever come across. What? So let's let with I mean without further ado let's get into it. Uh, a lot of commenters have asked, "Hey, why don't you check out a Hofner? Why don't we see any Hofner basses in your uh, in your videos?" So we got one, and it's not it's not great. It's it's um, it's bad. So this one in particular though is the Ignition series club bass. So what that means is that this is the budget model. This is the cheap one. This is, I think it's $4.99. And we kind of we kind of had high hopes because it looks great. The finish is this sparkly metallic red that is gorgeous. The uh, the the pick guard's kind of that uh, mother of toilet seat material, uh, as is the control plate. It's got the teacup knobs, it's got uh, the classic tiny, tiny tuners. It's uh, tiny tuner adventures up here on the headstock. And, um, yeah, then we played it. And when we played it, we found a few problems. So first and foremost, trying to get this thing set up out of the box was a little bit more difficult than we had imagined. It was, uh, it was very much detuned and even just bringing it up to pitch was a little bit daunting. The small guitar style tuners look great. You know, they've got that, the purloid buttons and the, uh, and the open gearing on the back and everything. But for example, trying to tune the G string up to pitch it felt like the G-string was going to break. It just felt that tight, that much tension. And I'm not sure if that is because the ratio of the tuner or if it's because the tuner itself is uh, tightened down really hard. Not sure, but that's, that's the experience that we had. The other thing that I noticed very prominently, and you might notice in the tones uh, that we're playing through this video, is the A-string itself is kind of producing almost a warble, doubled note kind of a thing, and it's, it's dissonant all by itself. We tried to uh, adjust the intonation, move the bridge around a little bit, make sure everything was seated at the nut and the bridge, and we just couldn't get rid of that sound quality on the A string. The E, the D, and the G did not have that problem, just the A, but it's really obvious when it happens. It's a little bit less audible in the uh, recordings, but in person, when you're playing it, you're like, ugh, what, what happened? here. Let's talk about a couple of positive things. The strings that did not have that problem, they sound all right. It's uh, flat wound strings. There's not a lot of sustain on the E string. The E string is very much one of those dead rubber band E's like Chris has on his, uh, on his red SG bass. And the controls are a little bit confusing as it is. Number one, you've got these two teacup knobs that are labeled volume one and volume two. Then you have three switches in between them. The three switches are as follows, rhythm and solo, which basically sounds like quiet or louder, uh, to, to be frank. Then there's bass on and treble on. And when you flip the switches toward the word on, it turns them off. 
And by them, I mean the pickups. Volume one and volume two are the individual volumes for the pickups. Bass on and treble on are for the neck pickup and the bridge pickup, respectively. But when you flip the switch toward the word on, it turns that pickup off. It's very strange. finish leaves a little bit to be desired. Again, we had to move the bridge around to try to uh, alleviate, number one, some intonation issues, number two, some of that warbling on the A string. It was actually worse before we moved the bridge. Let's see, there's a, a little bit of what looks like either glue or wax or something that has seeped out and dried at the neck joint. Really, there's not much else to be said about the fit and finish. It looks very nice. The fretboard even feels really nice. So let's get into the specs of this bass so that we at least know what we're dealing with. The Ignition Club Bass has a fully hollow body with a spruce top. The back and sides are flamed maple. Uh, it's got white binding all the way around. It's got a maple neck that is one piece, 30 inch scale with a 42 millimeter nut width. It's got 22 frets, that's nice. Bases like this sometimes uh, only have 20. It's got a rosewood bridge, floating bridge again. The whole base weighs seven pounds in the package. So I think without the packaging, it's probably a five pound base. It's very light. You can imagine that we were a bit disappointed in the performance of this bass. It should have been pretty cool. It should have had all of that vintage charm that everybody expected from Hofner, but it, it just didn't. Chuck had the Epiphone non-reverse Thunderbird 5-string on take 5 that he said, hey, I, I don't like this. And uh, yeah, yeah, uh, we don't like this. I don't like this. Chris doesn't like this. I definitely don't think Paul McCartney would like it. It's a good thing it's called the Ignition Series because it's probably better as firewood. I hate to say it. I hate to say that about a Hofner because Hofner's got this reputation that I would say they mostly deserve. They're high-end instruments. They're, you know, stuff still made in Germany. Still pretty good. But yeah, this, this entry-level model is, is just not. And... I'm disappointed. My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. Maybe we can get a, another one, either another one in this series that has a little bit better mojo to it, or one of the higher series that is simply better constructed. And we can compare. But until then, we've got to say, so sorry, this Hoffner is just not... We no, no, just no, <laughs> just no. There's there is there is nothing else I think to be said for it. But um, enjoy the tones that we were able to get out of it, and uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll see you next time here on Shorties. I'm going to sound all official. Warning. The following video may contain disturbing sounds. Thankfully, this bass is called the ignition because it belongs in a dumpster fire. Ooh.
Hoffner can charge in bases on his own. 